adversely affect the quality of our work and our home lives. Uh, this evening, we're going to, going to discuss a number of specific environmental toxins which have caused a number of problems for our Hispanic community here in Tucson. Uh, the specific toxin that we're going to address is TCE. Uh, my guests, Cecilia and Dale, are with, Ol with El Pueblo Clinic, which was founded, in, I understand, 1972 as a free clinic? That's correct. Okay. okay. Uh, specifically, it helps uh, our people in Tucson's Hispanic community who as a result of TCE poisoning have come down with a number of diseases. Now, uh, if you'll be patient with me for a few minutes, for those people who, who are seeing us for the first time, uh, I'd like to help you become familiar with the Environmental Health Foundation, uh, its story, its founders, and what its goals and its focus are. Uh, specifically, the foundation, the Environmental Health Foundation, is a non-for-profit organization dedicated to saving lives and improving the health of people struggling and seriously affected by environmental toxins. The foundation's corporate headquarters is here in Tucson, and we have a growing grassroots chapter. As you can see on the screen, our phone number is 577-5225. Uh, the foundation educates people about environmentally related diseases by sharing scientific information with you, the public. It looks at the environmental impact on our body systems, specifically people's immune system, our respiratory system, central nervous system, reproductive system, and children's health. Also, by supporting scientific research at major medical institutions, we are dedicated to saving human lives. We do this by finding treatment for people whose health has become adversely affected by the environment. Now, like many other foundations which are formed in this country by uh, interested Americans, um, they are typically formed by people who have family members that have a disease. Uh, this is very much the case with the Environmental Health Foundation. Uh, the foundation was formed approximately three years ago, three and a half years ago, by Robert and Alan Bell. In a 1993 interview with Robert Bell in the South Florida Business Journal, Robert said, My brother Alan, a former Broward County prosecutor and successful attorney, suffered a breakdown of his immune system as a result of environmental toxins in his fl South Florida office building. This has caused him to be confined to a strictly controlled environment in his Tucson home. His brother, Alan, who has the environmental illness in a Tucson interview from 1995, said, my story is only the tip of the iceberg, just a sample of what's going on all across the country. Listen, millions of Americans are getting sick, Many are dying, and we have to begin work to finally understand why and how this is happening, then to try to find treatment to help. Uh, in brief, that is the foundation story and its focus. Uh, since tonight's topic is on TCE, I'm going to uh, turn the floor over, over to my guests, and we're going to talk about the TCE problems and, and how the Specifically, the TCE program at El Pueblo Clinic has been able to help some of the people in our community. Uh, can you tell me when the program was first formed and, and why it was formed? Uh, yes, Chris. Uh, the program, the TCE program, started on uh, January 3 of 1994 mm -hmm. at El Pueblo Clinic. As you mentioned, El Pueblo Clinic has been in operation since 1972. Okay. Um, it's located in the plume of contamination on the south side. And so therefore it was appropriate that a uh, health uh, care for people that have been exposed to TCE would be placed right. there at the clinic. So, so I understand that prior to that time, there were no doctor's offices in the area. I mean, people weren't getting any, med any normal medical help anyway? Uh, they were getting uh, medical help, but um, they were being given, not treated specifically for any um, suspected illnesses okay. uh, possibly related to TCE. To toxins. And okay. that's what makes our clinic, our TCE program different from, you know, the uh, going to a doctor to see about your illnesses. Okay. All right. Um, the TCE program, um, you said it's been up and running since March of 94? Since January okay. of 1994. Gen January of 94. Yes. Um, can you tell me approximately how many people you've seen since that point in time? Uh, we've seen uh, a little more than 600 people. And I say a little more because we haven't counted our numbers uh, up to today. Right. But it's more than 600. Okay. Um, 
since you are having a lot of people come through the clinic with a lot of different problems, um, can you tell me t somewhat what the goals of the program are and, and what you're trying to accomplish by this very specific program? Yes. The um, uh, goal of the program um, that was placed there in 1993 was to address these concerns that people had with regard to their health uh, mm -hmm. that's associated to TCE, health problems that is that um, were adversely right. associated to the possibility of TCE being the cause of their problems. Okay. Uh, they received primary health care at the clinic and we're seeing any number of uh, symptoms or, or illnesses that are presented and uh, the difference is that these are doctor assessed illnesses Okay. They're not self-reported, and in, in, in that work that we're doing, we're gathering demographic information to be uh, take it, studied at a later date once we, uh, we end some of the uh, All right, work some of the immediate we, problems. Immediate problems. Certainly. And uh, we need some epidemiological studies, some studies. after that. Okay. Dale, I understand you in, in some concerns too uh, well in terms of the still focusing on the goals um, we we um, really are intending to serve a portion of the population uh, that is uh, otherwise would not be served okay. our, our program uh, provides a payment uh, for primary care services for those clients who uh, have lived in the area have been exposed to to the TCE right. and need medical care, we are able to uh, assist them with the care that they would otherwise not be able to obtain. Now, we, we talked about this earlier before the program. We had a chance to chat <coughs> um, pretty extensively, actually. Um, I understand that you have some criteria about people being able to use the program, mm -hmm. one of which is that they ha at least have lived in the area before 1981. Dale, can you sort of? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, you need to have resided in the area, have attended school, or worked in the area uh, on somewhat of a continuous basis between uh, 1941 and 1981, uh, thereabouts. Um, 19, so, just sorry to interrupt, but 1941. Yeah. So I guess what we're saying is that there's an extensive history of of contamination of that whole area. Ex exactly. The yes. the um, the dumping of the chemical into the ground, which then eventually uh, percolated into the, uh, the water, the water mm -hmm. uh, started back in the 40s. And so therefore, we're, we're kind of tracing kind of the origin of that back, of then, the back to that time. And therefore, people who may have um, resided in the area would have been consuming the primarily the water mm -hmm. in, in the area are the people who are at risk. Okay, and they're, they're showing up with a number of different symptoms. You brought me a sheet uh, which is from the Environmental Protection Agency from the U.S. government called EPA Facts About Trichloroethylene. And specifically, it states that the studies show that ingesting or breathing levels of TCE that are higher than typical background levels can produce in the following symptoms. Mm -hmm. uh, nervous symptom changes, liver and kidney damage, effects on the bloods, tumors of the liver, kidney, lungs, sex organs, uh, sex organs, possible cancerous tissues, uh, forming white blood cells, which turns into leukemia. Um, and, and, and the list goes on and on. Are these typical of some of the symptoms that you're seeing from that area? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And uh, we're uh, keeping all this information uh, so that... You're tracking. Patterns of illnesses will, in time, start to formulate, okay. and this will give us a better idea when our doctors that are knowledgeable in that area come in and study some of the problems, mm -hmm. the health problems. So and I, the ones I, you mentioned are indeed some of the things we're seeing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I get the sense that you are probably seeing more of some disease types than others, and, and mm -hmm. are the children more at risk? I know you mentioned the we were talking earlier again about the, the 13 to 21 year old population. Yes. Why are the children special? Well, we're targeting uh, the 13 years of age uh, as they are uh, children that were born uh, just at, at 1981 or just then, after. When the base, I guess the base is being closed then? 
uh, when the they... wells were being closed. Okay. The contaminated wells were, were okay. closed at, in that year. Mm -hmm. So children that are in that age range, up to 21, which are considered uh, pediatrics at, uh, from 13 on up right. to 21, those are the people we're concerned with, the children we're concerned with. And we are indeed seeing more patients in that age uh, right. range. You mentioned a boy, t a boy today who um, has shown up a couple times. He's got dizziness. Yes, and, and some nausea. Uh, a lot of uh, muscular aches and pains and things of that nature. And all those things we, uh, we bring in uh, okay. and have them evaluated by our doctor. And I, I think the point to make here is that these are normally healthy children. Uh, given the fact that they would be living in any other part of Tucson, they would have normal healthy lifestyles. And yet because of the location that they're living in, they're coming to your clinic they're and presenting and uh, they're presenting their problems, and yeah. uh, we are uh, going to be addressing that specific age range group very, very uh, closely. Okay. Uh, you know, and uh, it's important that parents who uh, have children that have gone to school in that area, and I can tell you the boundaries, uh, okay. which is uh, the area of study, is from Alvernon East to parts of the Santa Cruz River, including parts of the Tohono O'odham Nation, mm. and uh, down to uh, to Ajo, and and that's uh, north, and up to uh, Los Reales, which okay. is on the south. south as, as long as we're here and we're talking to a Tucson audience, um, either of you can share with the audience um, your specific location, the address, and your phone number, so that if there's some concerns that they can come to your clinic? Yes. Uh, we're located at 101 West Irvington Road, Okay. It's on the corner of 6th Avenue and Irvington Great. at El Pueblo Neighborhood Center. So, and, and what's your phone number, Dale? It's 573-0096. Okay. And your operating hours? It's 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Okay. If, if anyone, feel, if anyone feel, uh, is, who is listening uh, is residing in the area and they have not contacted us and they think that they might have any kind of medical complaints that could be related, mm -hmm. uh, as a result of this exposure, they should give us a call. Uh, Cecilia is our program manager. She will talk with you. She will assess. She will uh, evaluate you for eligibility and for possible uh, services um, through through the clinic. Okay. We we also uh, the we also do serve clients who have insurance. Now I, I mentioned that the the kind of the the thrust of the program itself is to provide care for people who have no means of payment. of payment. Mm -hmm. But we, we also uh, uh, treat patients who have some kind of insurance and still qualify on the basis of their residency eligibility. Okay. Uh, we had a, a, a pretty significant session, as I mentioned before, before the show, mm -hmm. and we talked about um, the uniqueness of the program and that it's unique as compared to any other program around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a specific reason why it's unique? And, and, and then are there specific services that are different than other, than other clinics? Uh, probably so. Uh, the uh, clinic at El Pueblo was uh, set specifically under the guidelines of a contract between Pima County and the clinic. And uh, this is the uh, one of its kind type of service in an mm -hmm. area of contamination. Tucson being the largest in the nation, one of the largest in the nation. Right. And there are about 200 other parts in the nation where there's contamination. And uh, as far as we know, and we did investigate, there were no uh, health care services to address these uh, specific issues. El Pueblo Clinic, I believe, took a very courageous step in trying to address uh, that care for a very uh, special for a population. For very specific population, yes. right. Mm -hmm. What would you... I'm just curious, what would you say is the population of that area in, in terms of what, what's your active patient list? You see uh, 2,000 people, people in a year, 3,000? Mm. Uh, I mean, with people that are showing symptoms, I oh. guess is the real question. You, uh, I don't know if I can give you a specific answer, but it's uh, but since its inception, we have uh, provided like over 5,000 different kinds of services, okay. including um, you know, primary care. We, we also include... Um, coverage payment for if the patient is unable to uh, pay for services to specialists, uh, pharmacy is, is covered. So a combination of those services, 
we have serviced, um, uh, I don't know the exact number of patients, but uh, a high range of services to the clients that do qualify for the program. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Is there a follow-up care that, that we provide right. uh, after right. the initial visit? W um, would you, uh, because um, we're trying to sort of identify um, certainly the population that's been affected by TCE, this toxin, right. And for those of you in the audience who don't know what TCE is, I'll read it specifically from the, uh, the EPA facts study again. Trichloroethylene is the pronunciation. It is listed as a colorless liquid with an odor similar to ether. It is man-made and does not occur naturally in the environment. TCE is used mainly as a solvent to remove oils and grease from metal parts, mm -hmm. which makes sense considering how industrial that area Absolutely, was. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, uh, I have some more questions here. Um, I understand that the site that was there, certainly the wells have been closed down, but the site is going through an, on, um, an ongoing remediation effort. Um, uh, yes. Have you seen some progress at all? Uh, we've seen, uh, seen some progress. Um, there's a group in the community uh, identified as UCAB, which is the United Community Advisory Board, which is working with the responsible parties in trying to uh, uh, sit at at a table, you might say, and discuss okay. the problems, and they see what the community's needs are and what the community expects from the responsible parties. Uh, I think it's turning into a, a very positive uh, work uh, effort between the c community and the responsible parties, uh, whereas before, you know, it was all a There's blame. a lot of finger pointing, yes. right. And right. today we've tried to turn that into a very positive um, Situation. So people, people are stepping forward and yes. saying. Yes, and there is uh, a lot of money that is being uh, put in for the cleanup, remediation of the water and right. the soil as well. Um, at, uh, he, at Plant 44 and with the Air Force mm -hmm. and uh, the Na Air National Guard, uh, they're using some very technical equipment to do all the cleanup and the study Certainly. of the soil and the water. And we're kept abreast, that is, the community is kept abreast of what's going on. And um, is it, does this committee report to community leaders? Yes. Okay. Yes, we do. Okay, and um, yeah, and um, so there's a very positive um, attitude in the community now where we're seeing the work that has been needed to be done for many years finally come to fruition. So Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about some specific aspects of the program which are, uh, which are helping the people in your community? I mean, I, a program is a general term that probably covers, that probably covers a number of, of different segments. Correct. Um, well, I'll give you a um, kind of like a breakdown on what happens fantastic. when a patient comes in. Okay. A patient comes in uh, compl uh, with a complaint that their health has been affected by TCE and reason why we're there. We, uh, uh, do an intake on the person. Uh, we find out some of the symptoms that they're complaining so that we'll be prepared for our doctor to to start right. their assessment. They fill out forms. There's about six forms, six pages of questions that are very uh, detailed. Very specific. So, very specific. Yeah, because I, I would take that you're probably trying to isolate exactly yeah. what their symptoms are to figure out yes, the causes. We, right. We have the pediatrics questionnaire. We have the occupational history questionnaire we have the just the coverall or medical history for okay, certainly. anyone else that comes in they fill that out uh, and we request that they bring something to prove to us that they have indeed lived in the area of contamination they don't have to uh, per se live currently there right. if they lived in the past they can also right uh, because at, at some point in time they're exposed correct certainly. Right. so yeah. once they bring in all the uh, necessary paperwork that we require as as part of the criteria of the program we set up an appointment for okay. them to be seen great okay. uh, dale i imagine you get involved in certain aspects of the program are there any unique cases that you've seen recently that sort of stand out well, I, I think there's, uh, we recently had a, a, a kind of a community meeting and our medical director kind of reported on some of the findings at, the, at that meeting and, and uh, some of the significant findings seem to be a higher incidence of, of, of situations like lupus, um, other connective tissue diseases, those kinds of things. So we're, we're kind of finding those and even though there is no scientific 
correlation between this exposure to this chemical and your health. They're, they're, uh, they're unscientifically, we, we, there seems to be some kind of uh, a very interesting association. Um, so that's the kind of things we're, we're running into. Um, I know. No, no, like no, I don't. Nothing. No unique particular case comes to mind. Okay, but but you're seeing a high incidence of lupus. Um, you mentioned earlier uh, that you're seeing children come through with um, stiff, achy muscles. Yes. And typically, if somebody didn't know better and they're having a scratchy throat and achy muscles, they'd say, "Oh, I'm coming down with the flu." Mm -hmm. But that's not the case at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, and indeed, uh, some of the kids uh, or the children that are coming through are, are complaining of a lot of muscular aches yeah. and pains. Headaches and as headaches well? Headaches and di dizziness, forgetfulness. Right. Uh, we're also looking at the possibility of learning disabilities in, in Sunnyside School District that uh, where between 9 and 10 percent of the kids there have learning disabilities. And this has been a study that was made throughout the city of Tucson, comparing them with other school districts. And Sunnyside always comes up higher, higher, higher in yeah. children with in learning instances. disabilities. Right. Right. And there's got to be a reason for that, because we're all created the same in terms of our molecules mm -hmm. that are put together. And yet, yeah, it, it's that just, school it's drift, yeah. an interesting coincidence that it's it's occurring that way in that particular school district. Yeah, with yeah. no known cause, right. supposedly. Right, yeah. with right, mm -hmm. yeah. no pinpointed cause. Right. Now, you, you've both mentioned that the committee, uh, and there are a lot of collaborative efforts with this. Uh, committee in trying to in trying to bring the responsible parties together. Mm -hmm. um, have you heard from the city at all? I mean, are they um, making reasonable efforts to try and help with any of this process? Um, they will be um, doing a what they call a study, um, but they're just in the beginning stages, beginning stages? right okay. now. There's a report that just came out uh, written um, by city staff. Uh, on some of the remediation plans they have for the very Good. near future. I believe in March they're starting to, to put that together. Okay, so things will be mm -hmm. kicking off pretty soon. Yes. And I, to add a little bit to that, yes. I mean, we really kind of owe some appreciation to the county and the state. It, it really is the county that has afforded us this opportunity mm -hmm. to have this program, and the state has also provided funding to, to assist. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's really through those governmental agencies mm -hmm. that that uh, we have been able to provide this uh, this program to the community. That's fantastic. Now, I I think what I hear you alluding to is that there is some direct funding coming to your organization yes. from the county and from other places. Right. Primarily, uh, primarily the county. The, ca the county and the state, mm -hmm. and and those funds are what allow us to um, to provide services to that provide that, uh, that that that. Uh, members in the community would not be able to purchase or provide on their own, would not be able to afford. Mm -hmm. So we have these these funds to uh, assist in the provision of these services. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm just curious, have either of you seen any incidents of uh, pregnancy, pregnancies that resulted in birth defective babies from from these toxins, you know, from any of the toxins that the women have exposed to in the community? We've had ladies that come in and to tell us of uh, uh, babies that they've lost, you know, in their third trimester and um, not being able to conceive or mis a lot of miscarriages uh, that uh, they've experienced. Uh, we've also uh, seen reports of uh, children. Okay. Uh, babies with congenital heart problems. Oh, I, I need to thank you for both being here. We received the high sign that the show will be ending pretty soon, actually in the next few seconds. Mm -hmm. Again, this is uh, Cecilia, and your last name again, please? Campillo. Campillo yes. and Dale Gearing from El Pueblo Clinic, located in the south part of the city. The address again is at? 101 West Irvington Road, and our phone number is? Uh, Five seven three zero zero nine six. Okay, and we are the Environmental Health Foundation. We will see you again next week at six p.m. on Channel sixty two. Thank you for watching, and thank you both for coming down. I appreciate your thank help. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. All right.